In today's video, we will show why Euler's identity is true. It is one of the most beautiful expressions in mathematics, and I have a t-shirt with this identity on it. We start with the cis function, noted by C I S. The result of the cis function is a complex number. The cis function is commonly written as e to the i times x, where i represents the square root of negative 1. e to the i times x is equal to cosine of x plus i times the sine of x. How was the cis function derived? Let's start with representing e to the x as an infinite power series. e to the x is equal to 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial, and so on. The next line shows the power series expansion for e to the i times x. Recall that i represents the square root of negative 1. All the terms that do not have i are in blue, and all the terms containing i are in red. Rearrange the terms in the expansion such that all terms not containing i those terms in blue are collected, and all terms containing i, those in red, are collected. So we have two separated collections. If you took calculus, the separated collections should look familiar. The power series for sine is x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth power over 5 factorial minus x to the seventh power over seven factorial, and so on. And it is shown in red on this slide. The power series for cosine is one minus x squared over two factorial, plus x to the fourth over four factorial, minus x to the sixth power over six factorial, and so on. And on this slide, it is in blue. Using the power series for both sine and cosine, we can simplify the expansion for e to the i times x. Hence, e to the i times x is equal to the cosine of x plus i times the sine of x. It is designated by Euler as the cis function. With the cis function established, let's calculate the cis of pi. Assuming that we are working with radians, the cosine of pi is negative 1 and the sine of pi is 0. Hence, e to the i times pi is negative 1, and if we add 1 to it, we get the final result of 0, proving Euler's identity. You can visit my blog, Eddie's Math and Calculator blog, at edspi31415.blogspot.com. Thank you and have a wonderful day.